So far we have studied the extreme single particle shell model. We have also studied the semi empirical mass formula for a nuclear system. In the semi empirical mass formula we got so many terms corresponds to the volume term, surface term, coulomb term and there, there was also a term which was the pairing term which was denoted by delta and that pairing term was deciding whether the binding energy goes more or less because the pairing energy term was different for, for even even nucleus and it is different for even odd nucleus, then odd odd nucleus, then odd even nucleus. So, pairing was important in case of the binding energy of the nucleus. We now discussed about, we have so far discussed about the potential well. Potential well we looked, uh, it was like this, that for a certain distance the potential was negative, which because of this shape the nucleus is as we can see it and because of this attractive force between the nucleons which holds the nucleus together. We have learnt that the pairing term is actually strengthen the bonding that is the binding of the nucleus is better because of the pairing term. For an even even nuclei what we got is all of the nucleons form pair which lead to a improvement in the binding energy. That means for an even even nucleus the binding is better and when we uh, solved the problem of finding the spin of nuclei of different different nuclei like oxygen, like fluorine etc. We have learned that for even even nuclei all the nuclei like protons or neutrons they form pairs and as they form pairs their individual spin sum up to 0 and the corresponding magnetic moment algebraic sum of the magnetic moment also correspond to 0. And for even odd nucleus, what we learned is that the single nucleon which was odd because except this single nucleon all the other nucleons form pairs. So, contribution of spin from them is equal to 0 and only contribution to the spin comes from this lone pair electron, I am sorry it is a lone pair proton or neutron. This lone pair nucleon will decide about the spin and the magnetic moment that is the angular momentum and the magnetic moment of the nucleus. Now in our video of nuclear spin we learnt this formula, this is the magnetic moment of the nucleus whatever it may be, it may be due to the spin, it may be due to the orbital angular momentum, this is the magnetic moment and which was written like g factor, this is a constant, mu n is the nuclear magneton and if it is mu s that is magnetic moment corresponds to spin angular momentum then s is the spin and if it is mu L then we will write it as G mu N L by H cross. Whereas nuclear magneton mu N was defined as E H cross by twice the mass of proton and the total magnetic moment of the nucleus was like that that the total nuclear magnetic moment was equal to G L that is the value of the g factor correspond to the orbital angular momentum into Lz plus Gs value of S, Gs correspond to the spin into Sz and whole thing is multiplied by nuclear magneton by H cross where Lz and Sz are the values of the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum 
but that are measured with respect to some axis here we have taken the z axis that is why L z and S z are written. In the nuclear spin section we have already discussed about this g values this is for proton it is g L is equal to 1 and for neutron it is equal to 0 as neutron is chargeless and for spin the g value for proton is 5.5857 and for neutron it is minus 3.8260. Actually, first I wrote it as 85260. This 5 would not be here. This was my mistake. Uh, why, in spite of having no charge, this neutron is still has a value of Gs? This is because of the quarks inside it. And the, this is this in detail discussed in our nuclear spin video. And the total angular momentum J, which is the sum of orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum, this should be J equal to L plus S. And as L and S, all of these are vector quantities L, I'm sorry, L S. So it is a vector quantity the value of j will be anything between l plus s to l minus s with an increment of 1. That is if we have 2 and 2 and if these 2 are the vector quantities then we will have any value between 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4 that is 2 plus 2 maximum which will give me 4, 2 minus 2 minimum which will give me 0 and the value of the magnetic moment correspond to the orbital angular, angular momentum will range from minus L to plus L through this zero value. S is fixed here for fermion which is equal to plus half and minus half plus half is for up spin up particle minus half is for spin down particle. So, we will have J equal to L plus minus half because S is fixed here which is equal to half. Now, from experiment, we have find, find, found out uh, the value of the average value rather of the magnetic moment. This denotes the average value because when we are measuring the magnetic moment of the nucleus, it is not possible to isolate one particular nucleus and measure the magnetic moment of that particular nucleus. We have billions of nuclei. So, we need to measure magnetic moment for each nucleus and then we just make an average of that. So, after getting the average, we will have this average value for nuclear magnetic moment, which is equal to G L L H cross and G S H cross by 2 because I have already put the value of S here, which is equal to half and whole thing is multiplied by nuclear magneton by H cross h cross h cross and h cross are getting cancelled out and we have a general formula for the nuclear magnetic moment. This is very essential we need to uh, memorize this actually g l l plus g s by 2 this by 2 that is half factor comes from the fact that, that for fermions s is always equal to half and neutrons protons are fermions like electrons. And we just put the values of G L and G S from this chart. We just put these values of G L and G S correspond to proton and neutron and we got this result. This is the average value of the magnetic moment for proton and similarly we can find also the average value of the magnetic moment for neutron which is equal to this and this is the average value for a neutron and everything is expressed in the nuclear magneton unit. So far we have discussed about the magnetic moment average value of the magnetic moment mu z plus for j equal to l plus half. Now what happens if j is equal to l minus half? L could range between minus L to plus L with 0 in between. S 
can have only two values that is fixed for fermions. Now how we get j equal to L plus half? There are two possible ways. One way is simple L minus half that is L minus the spin. Other way is we could have L minus half which is just uh, one value shortage of the maximum. Maximum value is L and just below that L value we have L minus 1. So, we could have L minus 1 for the orbital angular momentum value then we could add plus half for spin then we have J equal to L minus half. So, now this state that uh, J equal to L minus half will be a linear combination of these two states psi 1 and psi 2. Psi 1 correspond to L and spin value minus half. So, it is L and spin value minus half whereas, psi 2 correspond to L minus 1 and the spin value plus half. So, the linear combination would be like this A of psi 1 plus B of psi 2. Now, A and B these are the proportionality terms that means, how much psi 1 is there and how much psi 2 is there to make the linear combination and we could get the value psi the wave function. Suppose here we have L and minus half this combination for J that is now we are work working with this combination. So, mu z that is the average value of the nuclear magnetic moment should be equal to g l. Now, l is equal to l. So, we could put l but s is here minus half. So, we directly put in place of s minus half and this is mu n by h cross. We can cancel out h cross which, which I have not done here but you can do it on your I mean at any time and any point of time you could do that. Now, what if J is a combination of L minus 1 and plus half spin states? So, mu z will then becomes G L into L. L is now L minus 1, but S is plus half. So, it is this one multiplied by mu n that is in the unit of nuclear magnetic momentum. Now, we need to calculate the A and B. What is the value of A and what is the value of B? That is, we need to calculate the probability of finding psi 1, I mean this one, psi 1 and A will uh, tell me about the probability of finding psi 1 in psi and B will tell me the probability of finding psi 2 in psi. We have learnt in quantum mechanics about the ladder operator. This is a raising operator which is denoted by A plus. When it acts on a spin state n, then it raises its value, the state value n plus 1. And for the normalization, we have to multiply with the square root of that n value of that particular state. So, here we have n plus 1. So, we could multiply this with root over of n plus 1. This is like if we can, oh, if we want to see what happens in case of energy levels, if we operate a raising operator here with the energy value n, so the state will be raised up to n plus 1, that the, now the particle will be here at n plus 1. In case of nuclear spin states, nuclear's total spin j plus which is a combination of l plus and s minus and l plus is the raising operator for angular momentum orbital angular momentum it could raise the value l to l plus 1 but l is the maximum value as this is restricted with uh, this condition that minus l this should be L then 0 uh, what happens with my pen I do not know I need to change this and this should be minus 
L to plus L. So, I can't raise the value beyond plus L. So, I can't have this state. But I can raise the value L minus 1 to L that is allowed. And for S plus, I can raise the value from minus half to plus half. For this combination of L and minus half, which will give me J equal to L minus half, mu Z will be like this. And for this combination L minus 1 and plus half, which will again give me J equal to L minus half, mu Z, average value of mu Z will be like this. So, this is actually we can use in place of psi 1 and in place of psi 2, we can use this one. So, now we are going to operate J plus that is the raising operator for the angular momentum total spin angular momentum for the nucleus is just um, if we want to operate J plus on psi 1 we will operate J plus on this one. So, it will be like this J plus is equal to L plus plus S plus and L plus operating on this will give me 0 because L cannot be raised further as the maximum value of L is L and this is a spin kind of thing. So, L plus will be giving me 0 for this. Similarly, S plus will give 0 for this and S plus has raised the value of S from minus half to plus half with an increment of plus 1. So, S plus operating on this term will be 0 plus half that is G S by 2. So, J plus operating on A psi 1, we are getting G s by 2, A is there and this is the normalization constant. What happens if we apply J plus on B psi 2? In place of psi 2, we can write this. We should not write mu n by h cross. This is just a burden which we do not want to carry on. So, similarly, as in the previous case, L plus and S plus will be operating on this one. L plus will raise this value L minus 1 to L, but L plus operating on this will give 0. Similarly, S plus cannot operate on this, this is orbital angular momentum thing and S plus cannot raise the value anymore because it is already plus half which is the maximum value for the spin. So, for J plus operating on psi 2, we are having G L into L. So, if J plus operating on the entire psi state, which is just a linear combination of psi 1 and psi 2, we will have this, but let us have a trick here. Suppose, J plus is operating on psi, where psi is already the highest state that means these values are already at maximum. So, J plus operating on psi will give me 0. This is a trick I have applied.